What's up guys, so you're probably wondering why I have a 2020 calendar up. Well, it's because I thought I'd get a head start, so while y'all are busy slacking it in December, I'm already in January living it up. Like a Hawaiian, apparently. Anyways though, if there's one thing you guys should know about me, it's that I love fast food. My favorite being Carl's Jr. It may not seem like it because my metabolism is working its ass off, but I enjoy fast food more than most people. And because of that, when I'm hungry late at night and I don't want to get up to eat, I'll watch food videos on YouTube and fantasize about them to an almost sexual level. Like it's really not just fast food, it's anything deep fried that smacks hard, like I don't care how unhealthy it is, like... Oh, what's that? You're gonna deep fry ice cream and then top it with more ice cream? Don't mind if I f***ing do. Like, if I didn't eat junk food growing up, I wouldn't be here in front of this camera. I'd probably be like at Harvard curing cancer or something. And let me tell you, I don't care how many diseases I could have cured, I'd rather be right here with you guys. Psych, y'all suck. Anyways, the reason I bring up fast food is because while on YouTube looking at some of the sexiest goddamn food ever conceived by man, I come across this video by Entertainment Tonight titled, Super Size Me 2, returning, returning to McDonald's after 15 years. Close enough. Now, if you don't know what Super Size Me 2 is, apparently... Well, not apparently, this actually happened, but back in 2005, a documentary was released called Super Size Me, and it was about this guy named Morgan Spurlock eating McDonald's for a month and seeing how it affected his body. Now, in 2005, I was in the fifth grade, so this wouldn't be something I'd be interested in watching, but being a bi-curious child, I watched it anyway, and the only thing I could remember is him throwing up from eating too much McDonald's. <laughs> Basically, the point of the documentary was to bring awareness to obesity, and for some reason, a failed lawsuit where two obese girls tried to sue McDonald's and say they became obese from eating McDonald's. And even though it failed, it showed people that much of the same criticism leveled against tobacco companies applies to fast food franchises whose product is both physiologically addictive and physically harmful, which I guess I can kind of agree with, but those two girls suing McDonald's should have nothing to do with this. Like, how about just bringing awareness to obesity and not two girls who got fat because they eat food that makes you fat? That's like running someone over with your car and being like, well, Toyota makes the car, so technically they ran them over. Like, those girls really walked into court and expected to win. Now that needs to be a Netflix documentary starring Melissa McCarthy and Rebel Wilson. But basically the guy ate McDonald's for a month, got some health problems, gained some weight, and people were like, wow, who knew fast food did that to you? Good thing I only enjoy it in moderate occasions like 70% of America. Did I say that right? Moderate occasions? Is that even a thing? Moderate occasions? Don't make fun of me in the comments, please. Like he did all that, got popular for a bit, then retreated back into the shadows, and then in 2017, he releases another documentary with this grotesque looking movie poster, only this time it's about chicken and him opening his own fast food restaurant. I wanna start my own fast food restaurant. You're crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me what kind of food. The most eaten animal on the planet. Chicken. If I can have the farm that brings the chickens to the restaurant, that's a good story. Now, I'm not going to be going over the two documentaries, but I will leave a link to both of them if you guys want to watch them. But after I show you this clip, you guys might have some second thoughts about that. Like maybe in 2005, it was cool to call out fast food companies for being unhealthy. But if you walk into Burger King in 2020 and think just because you get their nasty ass plant burger, you're eating healthy. Well then don't complain to me when your significant other leaves you for gaining 20 pounds from eating plants. Like if you thought McDonald's, the company that pioneered fast food was gonna make any drastic changes other than taking away its supersize option after you ate their food like no normal human does, then it's no wonder you're trying to make a comeback because other than taking away its supersize option, they're basically the fucking same. But regardless, let's get right into the video. This will be the first time I have set foot in a McDonald's in 12 years. It's a big moment. Here we are. I don't feel good today. Oh my god. So already you can tell they're making this bigger than it has to be. They got the dramatic music, the slow motion shots, they even got some clips from his first movie. It's all cool and all until you realize that he's going to McDonald's. He's like, this is a big moment. Why? Why is it a big moment for you? Is, is Ronald McDonald gonna be there to tell you to f*** off himself? How is going back to a place you talk shit to a big moment for you? They're still making billions. Like a big moment would be you pulling up to McDonald's as it's closing down because of the impact your movie had, not spending money at a place you despise. And this is a drastically different place than the McDonald's of 10 years ago. It doesn't look like any McDonald's I've ever been in. It definitely looks better than those clown castles they used to have. 
<laughs> I like how these guys are amazed by modern architecture. You're telling me in the last 12 years you've never driven by a McDonald's? Vegans who only eat dirt know what a McDonald's looks like. P people who were just born know what a McDonald's looks like. But then this guy says, it's better than those clown castles. What the fuck is a clown castle? It had a red roof. That's like calling the old Pizza Hut buildings a clown castle. The only clowns I see are these three guys dressed like divorced dads going to eat at McDonald's. And when they walk in, then and only then can it be considered a clown castle. Nice stonework. I mean, that's not cheap. Yeah. Wait, is it going to taste drastically different? You're going to let us know. The smell's already wafting out of the door. Yeah, it really is. These guys do realize that's all for show, right? Like, just because the building looks good doesn't mean the food's going to be better. This man really said nice stonework. You're telling me that all you needed was some stone on the fucking building for you to consider eating there? I know some crack houses with some nice stonework. Doesn't mean I'm going to go in there and sample the crack. Wow. There's nothing in here that makes you think this is a McDonald's. Uh, I'd like to get a Southern style chicken. Except for the way it smells. And the fact that it says like, I'm loving it on the wall. Thank you very much. Wow, there's nothing in here that makes you think this is a McDonald's other than, you know, the smell, the logos, the slogan painted on the wall, and the fact that most of their menu items have a Mick before it. But you know, other than that, I couldn't tell if this was a McDonald's or Olive Garden with this magnificent stonework. Mm. All right, guys, here's the goods. Yo. Sure, let's take a look. Okay, are we ready? Let's go. Let's go. Enjoy. <laughs> So before I show you his reaction, I just want to say that the chicken sandwich he got, that Southwest chicken one, it wasn't a McChicken, it was a little more expensive, it was like $3, but that one smacked, you feel me? Like that one, it was still fast food quality, but that one could go toe to toe with Popeye's bitch ass. Glad to know some things haven't changed in 12 years. Oh, I'm having like, <laughs> Mick PTSD. Ha ha ha, that's so funny. I'm sure people who have real PTSD would find that hilarious. He's gonna be like, what's up guys? I'm here for the PTSD group therapy. My name's Morgan and I have Mick PTSD. They're gonna be like, what? He's gonna be like, yeah, I went back to McDonald's after 12 years and after I ate their chicken sandwich, I felt like I was back in Nam. <laughs> Like, dude, just listen to their reaction after they take one bite. Oh. <sighs> Why are they breathing like that? It's a chicken sandwich. They're acting like they just ate ass for the first time and the girl farted in their mouth. Oh. <sighs> this looks very different. This tastes just as bad. Kid, remember you used to have the styrofoam containers? So now they've got these. That gives you the sense of like minimal processing. Yeah, it's very green looking. These guys are just nitpicking everything. They did that because styrofoam is bad for the environment. Literally no fast food company anymore uses styrofoam. But that's not even the worst part. Just listen to what these guys say about the name of the sandwich. Not the actual sandwich itself, but the name some McDonald's marketing team gave it. Sandwich is called, you know, artisan. If you talk to a true artisan and showed them this. Sure, let's take a look. <laughs> yeah. It's not like they have artisan staff back there and then regular staff. This one guy makes that sandwich all day. There's That's all made day. by our artisan. <laughs> <laughs> These assholes are really talking shit because of the name that was given to the burger. Only they would be like, if you showed this to a real artisan, if you showed that to anybody, they'd be like, this is McDonald's, what's your point? Like this guy in the green really said, they don't have an artisan back there making this sandwich. Yeah, and Taco Bell doesn't have Mexicans making their burritos. Who gives a f you really think McDonald's cares if people actually think an artisan made their sandwich? People don't even ask for that. They say, can I get a grilled chicken sandwich? That's because most people who eat at McDonald's don't know what the fucking artisan is. So then this idea of like the simpler, the better. They're yeah. able to kind of create this health halo around the food by calling it simple. And you realize it doesn't mean anything. And look at this chicken. It's like a super nugget. I think these guys are the only ones who care about McDonald's new slogan. They're like, we've been trying to get people to notice the simpler the better for years, but then you guys walk in and expect us to have Gordon Ramsay on deck making sandwiches. Like, don't worry about the name of the sandwich. Just worry about if they get your order right or not. That's way more important. That's amazing. But also, you gotta love the fresh cracked eggs. Cracked fresh in our kitchen. 
with two hands. Why is he pointing that out as like a joke? Like, isn't that what you nerds wanted? Or would you rather have them go back to the old way? Like, what the f***? Even when McDonald's shows improvements, you're like, nope, not good enough. I want my eggs cracked fresh with three hands. Like, if I overheard them talking, I'd spit in their food in front of them. I feel better already. You know, it's like the bare minimum becomes the height of like, yeah. look at what we've done. If they said they've heard me. Yes. We've heard you. Literally talking about you. We've heard you, Spurlock. And now look what we've done. We made a trifold brochure. Again, McDonald's could give two shits about you. Like I said, the only thing you changed was getting the supersize option off the menu. So if you think 12 years after you made your first movie, they're finally like, you know, I think he might be onto something and you're fucking retarded. Like these three guys are the people you don't want making an anti-fast food documentary because they have unrealistic standards for low quality places. Like really? How the fuck is having an artisan make the sandwich gonna make it any different? It's the same ingredients. What is he gonna wipe the bun with his ass and get that special artisan flavor? Like y'all can artisan these nuts for all I care. Well guys, that's it. Like I said, I left a link to both movies in the description. And I also left the link to Doug Benson's movie, Super High Me, where he gets high for a month straight. It literally has nothing to do with fast food, but after 10 minutes of watching someone eat McDonald's and throw up, you're gonna wanna watch someone smoke. Until next time, peace. L7, baby, L L7. Know the essence of our presence, got you present for a fact, baby. Reynolds rap on the grass in the